Hello and welcome to the third week of the Open University's MOOC on Genocide. This week will be entirely dedicated to the topic of the Armenian Genocide that occurred in 1915 during World War I. Compared to any other genocide we occasionally hear or read about in the newspapers, TV, radio or online, I think this case of the Armenian Genocide is more prominent in the public Israeli media in recent years. This is of course related to the ups and downs in Israel's relations with modern Turkey, which is in the eye of the hurricane in many senses facing criticism for its denial of the genocide of the Armenian people. Meanwhile, modern Turkey tries to position itself as not really having anything to do with that event, which took place under the rule of the Ottoman Empire several years before the establishment of the modern state of Turkey in 1923. Nevertheless, in recent years, we've heard and seen quite a few politicians and intellectuals trying to surface the debate on the Armenian Genocide in the Israeli public arena. Therefore, we might know a bit more about it here in Israel than other cases of genocide we are discussing here at this MOOC. In the first out of five lectures we are having this week on the Armenian Genocide, I'll briefly relay some general information so we can learn about this story in a more orderly fashion. Later this week we'll discuss more specific factors in the rise of nationalism with respect to the Armenians and the Turks as well as other peoples who were under the rule of the Ottoman Empire. Later on during the week we'll discuss the genocide itself, which occurred in 1915 and perhaps a few very violent events that took place even earlier between the Turks and the Armenians. We'll end with discussing the post-genocide that is the attempt by Armenian organizations to commemorate this genocide that occurred in 1915. In the end of the week, we'll host Professor Yair Oron, the author of the book of the, on the Armenian Genocide, which is uploaded in our website. We used this book at the Open University to study the Armenian Genocide in the course on genocide. With respect to the Armenians in the Ottoman Empire, the rough estimates is that somewhere between 2.5 and 3 million Armenians probably lived under the rule of the Ottoman Empire in the year 1914, when World War I broke out. The Armenians lived in an area previously known as the Armenian Highlands. Modern Turkey changed the name of that region, now called Anatolia. They probably lived in that area for about 3,000 years. Archaeological evidence suggests that the Armenian presence in that area dates back to 1000 BC. We won't get into a review of Armenian history and the various Armenian kingdoms right now. I'll only point out the fact that for a long time Armenia was an independent kingdom or to be accurate split into several independent kingdoms in certain periods. At a certain point in history the Armenian people lost their independence and became the subjects of foreign occupying empires including the Byzantine Empire and various Muslim conquerors. Eventually, when the Ottoman Empire was to power, the Armenians found themselves as subjects of that empire which officially started out in 1453, when the Turks started expanding Constantinople, the capital city of the Byzantine Empire, and eliminating the East Roman Empire that existed for many centuries until the mid-15th century as stated. Then on from 1453 the Ottoman Empire successfully expanded into almost inconceivable dimensions becoming one of the biggest superpowers in human history to this day. As you know the Ottoman Empire reaches the gates of Vienna, rules the entire Balkan region and at certain periods takes control of significant portions of modern day Romania and Hungary. In the east it also takes over regions that are now part of independent Iran and territories on the Caucasus border. In the south of course it ruled the entire Middle East and Arab Peninsula and in its glory days the Ottoman Empire even ruled Egypt and all of North Africa all the way to Morocco. This vast empire included the Armenian highlands and the areas where Armenians had lived for thousands of years mostly under independent rule and sometimes under foreign rule. 
in this case under Turkish rule. The Ottoman Empire was ruled by the Turks. I'll speak briefly about the Armenians in general terms, so we can try to understand why during the 19th century, when the virus of nationalism infected and hurt so many nations, both in Europe and other nations under Ottoman rule, why did the Armenians firmly claim the right to independence or autonomy, which in fact sparked the de deterioration in their relations with the Ottoman Empire? The Armenians are one of the first peoples to adopt the Christian religion. In fact, they are the first kingdom to make Christianity the official state religion. This happens as early as the year 301, before Christianity becomes a legitimate religion in the Roman Empire. The Armenian Christian religion belongs to a denomination called monophysitism, a term originating from the ancient Greek. Mono, as in one, physic, as we know that met means physical. This term refers to a number of churches around the world whose theology differs from the Catholic Church. As you may know, the Catholic Church believes that Jesus, the Christian Messiah, during the 33 years he spent here on earth until his crucifixion, was both God and man. This is one of the basic principles of the Catholic dogma, while other churches, including the Armenian Church, hold a different view. They say it's impossible for a God to be a man at the same time. Therefore, some churches believe that during Jesus' life he was either only a human or only a divine entity, as does the Armenian Church. The Monophysite Church, which distinguishes Armenian Christianity from other old denominations around the world. In addition to having their own unique and autonomous church, the Armenians also speak their own language, which is naturally Armenian. They have a unique alphabet as well. Add to that what I already said earlier, and you end up with a clear equation. In terms of acceptable national parameters, the Armenians definitely deserve autonomy or full independence with respect to the standards we usually apply to determine which nation deserves independence. As long as a religious minority group paid its taxes, expressed its loyalty to the empire and didn't show any sign of resistance or antagonism about the status quo, its people usually enjoyed quite a lot of freedom in the Ottoman Empire, as did the Armenians, who for quite a while enjoyed freedom of occupation, freedom of worship and freedom of movement. Subsequently, over the years, a considerable amount of Armenians moved from the Armenian highlands to various cities, villages and regions in the Ottoman Empire. As a matter of fact, in the Ottoman Empire in 1915, the year the Armenian Genocide breaks out, the Armenians are living almost everywhere across the empire. This point is essential to our discussion, as we'll see later during this week, when we continue this lecture series. That's it for this brief introduction. See you in the next lecture, which will be about the rise of Armenian nationalism and nationalism in general throughout the Ottoman Empire in the 19th century and early 20th century. Thank you for now and see you later. <music>